Hello, my name is Megan Wilden. I'm the director of OLLI, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at Berkshire Community College. We are a membership organization with over a thousand members um, that provides uh, terrific learning um, and social and volunteer opportunities designed especially by and for people over 50 years old in the Berkshires and beyond. Um, and we are um, thrilled to have this TV show in conjunction with Pittsfield Community Television and the wonderful interns from Miss Hall School's Horizons program, right? That's the name, Horizons. Um, and I'm very happy today to welcome our guest, Richard Maturo. Welcome to Hello Ollie, Richard. Glad to be here. Thank you. Um, thanks so much for coming. So Richard is a um, professor. He is a retired journalist and a novelist. Um, and he also serves as Ollie's um, Literature Curriculum Committee Chair and he teaches classes for Ollie. Did I leave anything out? I'm a member also. <laughs> oh yes, and he's a member and he takes Ollie classes, absolutely. So uh, Richard, tell me how you first got involved with Ollie. Oh, it was um, on a few years ago. Um, I, I only teach part-time at the university now that uh, I'm retired, and um, so I sort of ser serve at their pleasure, and um, one year it was their pleasure they didn't need me, <laughs> and so I was uh, fishing around for something to do, and I found Ali. I can't even remember how, um, but I saw that um, instructors came from all different backgrounds, including teaching, like mine, and I, um, I sent, uh, I filled out an instructor form, sent it in, and, and a few days later, uh, Rudy, my predecessor, called me up and, and asked me to uh, do a course. Wonderful. And what was the first class, a course that you taught? It was a, it was a Shakespeare class. Ah. Um, and it was, um, uh, they were, at that time, they were experimenting with uh, evening classes. And I had an evening class. And it was, I got about 12 people, but evening classes at that time did not prove to be very popular, so. Right, yeah. So most of Ollie's classes run um, Monday through Friday during the day. So they're really um, designed predominantly for people who are retired. Um, and we hold classes throughout the county. We have classes in Pittsfield, Lenox, Great Barrington, uh, Williamstown, North Adams. Um, this current semester we have classes in um, at the Lenox Library, at uh, Homestead Senior Care, and the Whitney Center for the Arts in Pittsfield, and also at the Triplex and Berkshire County's South County Center in Great Barrington. So um, Ollie tries to serve the whole county and provide access to um, terrific classes and learning um, throughout the area. In fact, we're also thinking about expanding to Columbia County. Ah. Which is a big uh, county, though. So if yes. you pick one place, I mean, it's still. Yeah. But you know, we we're have all a few used to driving in Columbia County. Yeah, we're yeah. getting. We're, I've signed up several more just yeah. um, um, this semester. So um, tell me what you like about Ollie, and what's oh, kept well, you with us. Uh, I, I actually started, uh, although I had um, applied to to teach. Uh, I was put on the schedule for a couple of semesters in the future. So in the meantime, I started taking courses. And, um, and I was just uh, amazed at, at the level of um, uh, expertise, and the, um, the intellectual level of the class. Uh, people asked such interesting questions, brought such interesting um, information to the class. Um, so it was a very stimulating environment. I, I was really impressed. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. And so I've continued taking classes um, when I'm not teaching and occasionally even during the semester when I am teaching. So. That's great. I've heard from many um, instructors that uh, what they like about teaching for Ollie is that this is an experienced um, audience uh, that brings a lot of knowledge to it. And also there, um, of course, the people that are in the classes are there completely voluntarily. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's not like they're, it's high school or college where you're, you, you know, you're obligated to take certain classes. And the other thing about all these classes is there's no tests, there's um, no grades, uh, no homework. Although, you know, if it's a literature <laughs> class, you're kind of expected to read the book, but you know, no one's going to get mad at you really if yeah. you don't. So but it's, they it's do. They, 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 read, um, uh, they read them voluntarily. Uh, I, I taught a course in um, Moby Dick a couple of years ago 
and um, I, I must have had between 30 and 40 in the class. Wow. And it was quite obvious from the questions and comments they made that people were reading it. And um, I, I, I'll never forget what um, Stacy Wallach said. He was in the class and he teaches, he's one of our teachers too. Uh, and he said, I absolutely hated that book, but I loved the class. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so. that's, I can't imagine a better compliment actually. So. Okay, you are you are definitely one of uh, I would say Ollie's favorite instructors, mm -hmm. and uh, your classes are are very well attended, and I hear very very good things about them. Um, and one of the other uh, wonderful and amazing things about Ollie is that all of our instructors are volunteers, um, so they are volunteering their time and their their um, knowledge and and their talents um, and sharing them with our members and although we we do have two staff we have a thousand members and it is really the members that run Ollie um, and um, and they they edit the catalogs they um, write the newsletters they choose the classes um, they teach the classes uh, so many different ways and they really make it what what they would most like to go to so if you're a member of Ollie and you want to you'd like it would be really great if Ollie offered this then um, you have the opportunity of, of talking with us and we can help make that happen which is really exciting yes so uh, uh, as along with them um, teaching Ollie classes and um, attending Ollie classes you also help develop and choose Ollie classes. Yes, that's been a big challenge. Uh, I had not expected this to be thrust upon me quite this soon. Uh, I was co-chair for all too brief a time uh, and, and then my predecessor died and so um, I s suddenly realized just how much he did uh, and, and it does mean coming up with um, instructors for every semester usually m a good part of a, a year ahead of time. Uh, right now I'm working on next um, summer. 2017? Yes. Next summer. yes. <laughs> wow. Well, I have to say No, you... summer 2016. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> I thought you... Uh, and and it, is, it is a challenge. So far, um, uh, everything has come out okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I have gotten people every... Um, uh, every semester. I've, um, this winter was a challenge because uh, one person dropped out and um, uh, I had to replace that person and also add another because we, we were expanding our, our winter offerings in, right. in literature and it worked out. I got two new people and they both have worked out very, very well. Um, but I'm always looking for more. <laughs> if anyone is, uh, has a, a literature um, course they would love to teach and, and feel that they could do it, um, I would be happy for them to uh, apply, get in touch with me, and, and uh, let me know what their thoughts are. That's wonderful. And so if you're listening and you, you have an idea for a class that you would like to teach for Ollie, um, just you can give, give me a call at 413-236. 2192. You can um, also uh, email me at mwilden, or actually the easier address is Ollie, O L L I, at berkshirecc.edu. That's Berkshire with no S, cc.edu. And we would love to hear from you. And our instructors range from retired professors, um, like Richard, who is semi retired, um, active professors. We have a number of um, professors from Williams College who, who teach for us, which is a really a wonderful um, way to access a real treasure here in the Berkshires. And then we have people who have retired um, from one field and then really dive into um, a subjects and areas that they've always really wanted to explore. Um, and that can be uh, really fulfilling as yeah. well. So for example, we have a uh, retired real estate developer who um, had a um, bachelor's degree in history who now um, teaches very very popular history classes for us Stacy Wallach and you may have seen him um, his classes are also broadcast here on um, uh, community television and uh, we have a retired doctor who um, teaches Italian cooking classes and also <laughs> film classes so um, there is a really wonderful opportunity to um, pursue something that you love and then share it with other people mm -hmm. in really interesting ways 
So tell us about your relationship with Mr. Shakespeare and, and uh, oh. what you bring to that. Because I, I know you've taught classes in the past on Shakespeare, and right now you're in the middle of a multi-year series of courses. Yes, well, Shakespeare was my, my field in, um, in grad school. Uh, it's my specialty. And um, I did a preliminary course some years ago, the first one I did for Ollie. But then, um, uh, again, in consultation with my predecessor, Rudy, I, I, um, I proposed that we did, do a series, a four-year series, um, each spring, uh, doing a different phase of, um, of Shakespeare. So the first year, last spring, we did the uh, histories. We're doing the comedies this spring. Uh, the tragedies uh, the following spring and the uh, uh, the last spring, the last of the four, will be, for lack of a better term, the late plays, which don't really fit in any category very well. Uh, and then in, in addition to these, uh, in the summer semester, our shortest one, which is only um, four weeks in June, I show some classic movie versions of some of the plays that we just read in the spring. Uh, so last, last summer, uh, last June, I showed uh, the, the, the great Orson Welles' Chimes at Midnight, which is, um, which is coming, they're, they're finally cleaning, making a nice clean copy I heard on the radio recently. Um, I had to get one from Brazil, of all places. Wow. Um, uh, but anyway, he made this classic version of the, um, the Henry uh, IV plays um, called Chimes at Midnight. And we saw the Kenneth Branagh, Henry V, and, the, uh, and for comparison, we, we also saw the uh, Laurence Olivier, Henry V. So that, that's what I'd like to do during the, during the summer, to show uh, how different directors uh, and actors have interpreted the same role. Uh -huh. That's, that's um, wonderful. So it's really a two-part series. Um, in the spring, you, you, you read the text together and talk about the play, and then in yeah. the summer, you, you see a theatrical version. Yes, and then and we talk about that afterward. Yeah. But no popcorn, though, huh? Um, let's see, is it allowed in K-11? <laughs> I don't know, I'll have to check the rules. I, I sometimes hear crinkling cellophane, but <laughs> not popcorn yet. So, um, Richard, you, you yourself are also a writer, is that correct? I am, more or less, yes. So tell me about uh, some of the works that you've published. Okay. Um, well, um, I, I should probably say I have been published. I have not published. In other words, I'm lucky enough to have had a actual publishers pick them up in every case. I've had six uh, novels published. Um, three are contemporary. They, they're uh, they're modern novels, and the other three take place in the ancient world, which my, is my other field, uh, mythology. Um, and uh, the mythological ones are, um, uh, well, one's a tragedy, one's a comedy, and the other one is, is um, sort of a history. It's about um, uh, ancient Troy. The modern ones uh, deal with uh, contemporary issues, um, but each one is uh, named after the, the major female character. Um, the, the titles are um, Luna, Janie, and Leslie. Those are the, those are the three. And um, I, I like to um, delve into uh, what, it, um, what it's the challenges of being a woman in the modern in the modern world, and each one of these is, faces um, the uh, uh, the inevitable things that that face women. Um, uh, I don't know if I can say much more about that without getting into the plots themselves, but um, but that's the sort of thing that I write about. And how long have you been writing fiction? Oh, since uh, the seventies, <laughs> which will date me a bit. Yeah. That's great. And then, uh, do, how do those the contemporary novels relate to the mythological ones? Uh, the I, I chose um, mythological stories that that, um, that sort of interest me. Um, the the contemporary ones, even those, are based loosely on um, on a myth. For instance, Leslie is based roughly on the Odyssey, and. Um, uh, Luna on a, a rather more obscure myth uh, of Io, um, which means something to me, but it doesn't have to mean anything to the person reading it. You, you can read them, and I hope enjoy them without uh, any knowledge of, 
of mythology at all. But for me, it gives me a, um, a sort of focus and a way into the story, uh, and sometimes gives me an idea of how to arrange the plot, because I have this plot behind me that I'm thinking of, this mythological plot, but then I rework it and, and give it a modern twist. Um, and that, that's actually what I'm doing with the, the short story series, too. Um, I'm, I'm, I've been doing a series of readings uh, with the um, town players in Pittsfield at the Whitney C Center. Um, and I, I have a, um, a short story collection now, as yet unpublished. But um, in it, again, I take um, mythological stories of women again. Uh, and each one has the title of, of the, the woman from mythology, but each of the stories actually takes place today. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it reinterprets it and puts a twist on, on the ancient story. So when is this reading? Uh, the next one is going to be uh, the last Sunday uh, in January. It's going to be January 31st. It's at the Whitney, um, 2 o'clock in the afternoon and uh, only $5 admission. <laughs> uh, and uh, this particular one is called Iphigenia. And now the story, the original story, is um, that Iphigenia was the daughter of Agamemnon. And, when all, and he was the commander in chief of all the Greek forces that were going to sail to Troy to besiege the city, the Trojan War. And all the ships are in the harbor at Aulis and the goddess Artemis will not allow the winds to blow because he has offended her. And sh she says, you can only have the winds back if you sacrifice the person who means most to you. And that was his daughter, Iphigenia, which he does. He sacrifices her. And the goddess allows the winds to waft the, the fleet to Troy. That's the myth. Now, I Gee, have written, how do you translate that into I a have, modern story? You'll just have to you'll, come and see. <laughs> that's right. So uh, everyone's invited to come here. Richard Maturo Reed um, on Sunday, January 31st at 2 p.m. at the Whitney Center for the Arts, which is located in downtown Pittsfield on Wendell Avenue. You may know it as the Colt House or the former Women's Club. It's right next door to the um, uh, Berkshire Music School and behind the Berkshire Museum. Do you remember the address? 42. 42. 42 Wendell Avenue and we're really thrilled um, to be partnering now with the Whitney Center for the Arts and this winter we've started offering classes there um, and it's a terrific partnership it's a great um, organization and building um, so if you haven't been to the Whitney yet um, do come Sunday January 31st and find out um, about Iphigenia Iphigenia <laughs> come on you can practice pronouncing it um, in the modern day, that sounds fascinating. Yeah. So I see this connection between uh, that 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 um, you know that there's certain stories that are found in Shakespeare that that are found in mythology that you know that are still resonant with us today, and and that that you know the same stories keep happening and so forth. So tell me a little bit more about um, your upcoming Shakespeare class and the oh. um, plays that you're going to be discussing. Sure. Um, and by the way, I'm just going to add that this, um, he'll be teaching Shakespeare's comedies in our spring semester. Our spring semester starts um, April 11th. Um, the catalog will come out at the end of February. And if you want to get on our mailing list to make sure you get that catalog, because you'll definitely want to take Richard's class, um, you can give us a call at 413-236-2190 or email us at ollie, O-L-L-I, at berkshirecc.edu and ask us um, to send you our spring catalog and we'll be very happy to. Okay, uh, well the, uh, the semester is uh, six weeks long, the, the spring one is, and so I can fit in six plays. Uh, last year when we did the histories I could only fit in five because I wanted to do a, uh, an introduction to Shakespeare on the first day. But um, uh, the six plays we'll be doing uh, our Midsummer Night's Dream, and then, and this will sound a little strange because we're doing the comedies, but we're doing Romeo and Juliet. Uh, but there's a reason for that. During the period that uh, Shakespeare was writing his happiest comedies, he wrote one tragedy. Uh, 
Romeo and Juliet. And this was not the period of the tragedies, which came rather later. Uh, about five years later, he turned to tragedies. But he wrote this one, and people have said it's pretty much a comedy that takes a tragic wrong turn, and, and there's a lot of truth to that. So we're going to do um, um, Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, Romeo and Juliet, uh, uh, Merchant of Venice, Much Ado About Nothing, As You Like It, and Twelfth Night. So. And of those, which is your favorite and why? Oh, um, I like As You Like It. <laughs> <laughs> that that is my my favorite, probably because of Rosalind, the main the main character. Um, it's not often done. Uh, there there are no good movie versions of it. Oh. Laurence Olivier did a, a terrible version of it back <laughs> in the 1930s, with uh, an actress playing Rosalind, who's who quite clearly, for whom. English quite clearly was a second language, oh. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's it's almost laughable now. Um, but there's going to be a, um, uh, one of those um, HD um, broadcasts of a London uh, production that's oh, the coming National up. National Theater. Yeah, that's uh -huh. coming up in the spring, which I am really looking forward to because they have been they have been wonderful. In mm -hmm. fact, in the when we do the uh, movies of of comedies in June. I've chosen one of them. They did a, a, a just a wonderful um, Love's Labor's Lost, which we're not going to read, but the production was so good I, I thought I would include it with the, with the movies. Great. Yeah. So tell me more about uh, why As You Like It is your favorite. Oh, uh, well, almost nothing happens in it. Uh, <laughs> it there's a wrestling like Seinfeld. There's a, there's, there's a wrestling match at the beginning, which is the big action of the of the story, and then uh, Rosalind flees to the woods. I won't go into why. Uh, disguises herself as a boy, and uh, with her her um, her maid, who divi dis disguises herself as a boy too, and and they. Um, uh, and they meet various people in the woods, including her beau, who doesn't realize it's her because she's disguised as a boy. And uh, and she teaches him how he should how he should court Ooh, her uh -huh. <laughs> when if he should ever meet her again. It's 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 a silly play, but it's it's just marvelous. <laughs> There's a lot of gender fluidity in Shakespeare, yes. isn't there? It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, since since boys played the female parts, this was a natural thing for him to do to have themselves disguised as boys because that's what they were. Uh -huh. So. But that an interesting acting challenge. <laughs> yeah. That's but, like didn't didn't Ju Julie Andrews had to play a guy who was pretending to be a woman or maybe it was oh. a vice, in a movie then I mean, yes. it's not related to Shakespeare but yes I, I remember that big memory of that so tell me some more about um, some of the literature classes that are coming up this spring what else can oh we look yes I brought to? I brought the list of them so so I uh, would remember what they are um, we have a, a Williams professor uh, Layla uh, Rauhi who is going to do um, a course called the power of story uh, in which she uh, discusses how, I think it's going to be how narrative works, mm -hmm. and she's going to use uh, several several um, stories to illustrate that. And several uh, novels, I think, right? That's got a pretty big reading. Yes, I'll ha I, yeah, I have list. to look back at that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. bring that list with me, but uh, I think you're right. And that's going to be held at Williams College. Yes. Um, almost all of the Williams professors do teach up there. And, yeah, because we don't want to, we're like, thank you for teaching, yes. we'll come to you. <laughs> yeah. And I've, uh, it's not really that bad a drive. I've, I've done it many oh. times. I've taken courses Nothing's there. a bad drive in the Berkshires because no. it's so beautiful and there's not that much traffic. True. That's that's how I see it. Yeah. And let's see, um, Wendy Greenberg is going to do a course called, called the Garden Motif in literature. Uh, many... Um, Perfect for spring. It is, yes. Many, many pieces of literature have, have made use of the, of the garden as a, as a motif. Uh, Oh, and Rabbi Josh. Rabbi Josh Brindle has, has been a very popular instructor. He's an Ollie rock star just like you. He, he <laughs> has, 
Um, uh, he always uh, gets a, ha has a large following. Uh, his classes are well attended. And he's, um, he's been interested in all kinds of things. Uh, I think his first one was on science fiction. Uh, yeah, he's a big science fiction fan. Yes. He's still analyzing the latest Star Wars movie. Oh, I'll bet. <laughs> yeah, we finally saw that last night. I waited till the crowds finished. Um, uh, he's doing a course called Passionate Song, the Story of uh, King David. Uh, it doesn't matter what, what the title of his course is, um, um, what, the, what the title is, they're always great. Um, I've, I've been in most of them. Uh, and he's, um, he's very good. He does encourage um, people to talk in the class. And, um, and he can be heard no matter what the hall is because he has a wonderful, booming voice. Absolutely. And the last one, um, we're trying something new. Uh, Carol Fisher, along with uh, uh, two or three others, uh, is doing a course called Theater Out Loud, a play reading workshop. And in this one, they will be, they will be um, actually reading plays uh, and, um, uh, and analyzing them um, sort of around a big conference table. Well, that so. sounds terrific, Richard. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, for, to find out more about Ollie and our current and upcoming classes, you can visit us online at berkshireolli.org. That's berkshireolli.org. You can also give us a call at 413-236-2190 and join our mailing list. And please don't forget to come and hear Richard Maturo read one of his short stories on Sunday, January 31st at 2 p.m. at the Whitney Center for the Arts in downtown Pittsfield. Thanks again, Richard, and we look forward to seeing you in the next Ollie okay. class. Thank you for having me.